I have a genetic connective tissue disorder called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, E-H-L-E-R-S hyphen D-A-N-L-O-S. It's usually shortened to EDS. Living with EDS is really tough. EDS causes a lot of problems. It's a systemic condition due to weakened collagen, which is your body's glue. So it affects the joints in the musculoskeletal system, but also the internal systems as well. Um, you know, your organs and your, dige your digestive system and urinary system, intestinal, all that. Um, it's, it's very challenging, but it tends to be progressive. Yeah, Ehlers-Danlos presents with uh, soft skin that is often stretchy like mine. <laughs> it's a bit embarrassing, <laughs> but it is what it is. Um, and hypermobile uh, loose joints that easily sublux and dislocate and things like easy bruising and pretty severe, like moderate to severe pain. Pain is huge with Ehlers Danlos. It's very painful. We live with a lot of pain. I have developed a complication of EDS where I have unstable discs in my neck and I have to be on painkillers because it is really painful to live like that. And at the moment in my country, I'm unable to get the help of a neurosurgeon trained to operate on Ehlers-Danlos patients to fuse my spine as I need. So that's been really tough. So <clears throat> I've been living with that as well as um, a lot of other problems with EDS, lots of issues with my immune system. So in EDS, the immune system doesn't, oh, it's not normal, <laughs> let's just say that. Um, so we have issues with infections. They don't heal, we don't heal too well. Um, from wounds and infections and sometimes that can uh, cause the immune system to go into overdrive and then we get something called mast cell which is to do with histamine and having lots of allergies and just an, basically an overactive crazy immune system where you have to start watching what you eat and take medication to try and um, you know control the mast cell it's crazy so I have to deal with all that and more I also have a common comorbid condition of Ehlers-Danlos that involves heart and circulation. I have dysautonomia, and um, <clears throat> that means that your autonomic nervous system is deregulated. And uh, I have a form of dysautonomia called POTS, which is really common. A lot of people with Ehlers-Danlos have POTS. And I have trouble with hydration and staying hydrated and having enough, you know, fluids. I, I have um, low blood volume and stuff like that. So I get fluids every week in an IV and I have a port here for that. I, ha I had it placed because my veins were getting really difficult, rolling away, just hiding not easy to get a vein <laughs> every time and it was getting worse and worse so my doctor decided to get me a port um and I can get blood work and medications in there as well and stuff so that's good and that's it's helpful for that and so far it's going pretty well um I only had it placed in August and so only about a month and a half now so I have that uh, I'm on beta blockers to try and control my POTS. Um, I have digestive issues. I have pretty severe IBS and dysmotility in my gut. I have pancreatic insufficiency. So I have to take uh, pancreas enzymes and uh, or something called ursodiol uh, for the gallbladder because my gallbladder is disordered. Um, and kind of lazy, but they won't take it out. Don't get me started. And uh, yeah, lots of GI problems as well as very severe pain. Um, <clears throat> like I said, I'm in very severe pain. I wake up in severe pain, um, sometimes nauseated, things like that. And um, so I have to be, I have to be on pain medication for my <laughs> sanity. Um, oh, and I want to mention that in addition to Ehlers-Danlos, I do have diabetes. 
We're not sure if it's type 2 or what it is. It's kind of like undetermined. They tested me for a genetic type of diabetes uh, called Modi, but it came back inconclusive. A lot of the times Modi does not come back in the genetics, so unfortunately they kind of just assumed that I have it. Um, and because I have pancreatic insufficiency as well, it can indicate that they're connected. The pancreas, my pancreas is just not, not right. <laughs> I get frequent UTIs or I can, if I don't take my D-manos and stuff, I take it. So I, t I am pretty good at warding them off, but it is really frustrating because if I don't catch it on time, it can turn into a kidney infection. Um, I have issues with neurogenic bladder so I have issues like emptying that can sometimes cause a backup and that can lead to a kidney infection which is not good and then um, a couple times I've had hydronephrosis which is like water around my kidney so usually it's the right kidney for some reason that gets affected um yeah I have all kinds of crazy issues with this condition and I really hate it it's really hard I mean I know I have to manage it, and I do, and I try to do the best that I can, but it gets overwhelming, and lately I've been feeling really unwell, so I'm I'm just trying to get through and, and talk about my experience and um, my main hurdle right now and the fork in the road is the neck. My neck is really bad. I actually need to lie back right now because I, sh I shouldn't even though I took my painkiller I shouldn't really be sitting upright for that long um, I'm often in bed and I have several neck collars and stuff I made a v another video about that um, because some trolls made some ignorant comments about it which was so out of line and not correct of course so yeah it's really hard the whole thing and I strive to still do my music. I re released an album in, uh, well, first in 2017, and then I remastered, we re remastered it in 2020 and revamped the cover and stuff and added a couple new songs. And it was so awesome. Like the, the new version, I'm proud of it. <laughs> I really think that it's going to do well and it's, it's starting to circulate actually. Um, and it's like synth indie pop, synth music, with some guitars and things like that too. It's it's great. It's very catchy, fun, and also uh, the lyrics are, you know, inspiring and encouraging and oh, empowering basically. So um, I'm proud of my album Dreamer Queen, not under the machine, and um, proud of, you know, having written some books and stuff. I'm trying right now to write a book about my experience with EDS, about when I first suspected it, and then all that happened when I tried to get a diagnosis. I went through something really hard at first, and it was really crazy, and I fought so hard to get a diagnosis, but I ended up having to have like a, kind of like a mini stroke uh, crash, like a severe crash while I was on a trip in another country in order to even be taken seriously. So it was crazy, and I'm not the only person with EDS that has had this problem. People with EDS, in spite of how serious it really is, because we look normal and, you know, actually good, which I think, personally, I think that's the soft skin that makes us look that way. Superficially, it's misleading, and um, the thing is, is that it's something that we're born with and we often, you know, don't get diagnosed as kids and then we start experiencing damage and problems and then we try to seek help and it's really bad because doctors do a lot of not wanting to look into it, you know, being phobic about it, gaslighting and all that kind of stuff. It's a really serious problem with um, many chronic conditions uh, and definitely with Ehlers-Danlos and it's it's got to stop because this, this is a serious condition that can even claim your life if it's not managed properly, especially. So we need better care, better management, and better treatment. And uh, Canada is really bad for that, the country that I live in. I've had to fight tooth and nail. I, I do have a good 
GP now who not only believes me, but has put a care plan and now my condition is accepted only because I had to get really sick. You know, I'm, I'm really sick today and I'm really disabled by this. And, you know, I have to use a power chair. I have to wear neck collars. It's really, you know, it didn't, it didn't need to get this bad. Um, and it got this bad because of ne years of neglect. So I really want to speak out about that. It just really needs to change. And we need awareness for Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. It's described as a rare disease, but it's really not. It's more like underdiagnosed. It's unusual. It's an unusual disease, but it's not rare, you know. Um, so people really need to learn about it and educate themselves instead of you know, making um, judgments like Ehlers-Danlos is a dynamic disability, as I described in my other video. So, um, and that's why a lot of people make judgments too. But it's all about education. If people could just be educated and then become concerned about things like not about, you know, me not being able to get my neck surgery and be fused in the neck because there's no available neurosurgeons here in Canada. And they won't allocate the funds at the moment to hire one, even though we badly need it. Like that is just not good. And that kind of thing needs to stop. So the ILC Foundation here in Canada advocates for Ehlers Danlos, they're nonprofit, and they are pushing really hard. Like they are really working hard to get us help and services. Uh, they ended up opening a clinic in Toronto and we're trying to get a clinic here in BC. And it's been so hard, like it's hard enough to have a rare disease that is, well, not rare, whatever, unusual disease that is systemic and very painful and very challenging, very disabling, very challenging. And, um, you know, have to take lots of different meds like I do for, for this and that. Um, uh, eat, eat in a certain way, eat at a certain times, um, rest a lot, you know, conserve my energy. Um, oh, it just, it's endless, endless challenges. And it's hard enough to be doing that, but to be doing that and also be forced to fight for care, you know, to be concerned about having an emergency because you worry that they're not going to be educated enough to help you if you're having some kind of urgency and you need to go to the ER and, you know, dreading going to the ER and it's just, um, it's not okay. So we, we need awareness really badly. A lot of people with EDS are suffering and it's the more that we get the word out there and the more that people are familiar with this condition, the more that we can start raising funds for research and for resources and all of that. So that's why I speak out.